Well, hello there, amazing business owners. Welcome to a new year. 2019 is in front of us, and hopefully you have a brand new planner or notebook or something that is that proverbial clean slate for the new year. I know that we have taken a little bit of a hiatus. I had some technical issues. We have figured it all out. I have a brand new team member, and we're going to start moving her into podcast stuff soon. So I'm super excited about that. And today, I'm going to share how I set my goals every year and crush them because I'm able to stay focused and actually track the steps to get there. I also have a free gift for you, a goals tracking sheet that I have used for the past few years in my business. It is a monthly tool to help remind you of the bigger picture so that you can keep your focus and look at the steps that you need to take to actually get things done. Because let's be real, working for yourself can be really tough. You don't have a boss hanging over your shoulder. You don't have someone that makes sure you get your work done. It's all on you. So let's talk about how to actually move forward with those goals, track your progress, and keep moving your business forward to where you want it to be. As always, if you have any questions and you want to see the show notes, head on over to businessstraightup.com slash podcast. And today's freebie is that monthly goals download. It is a free sheet. It's two pages. I print it front and back page, and it'll walk you through everything that you need to know when it comes to setting your goals and looking at the actual steps that you're taking every single month. Because if you're not tracking it, you're not managing it, and chances are you're not getting things done. So I want you to go download it. Check it out. It's at businessstraightup.com slash monthly goals. You ready? Let's do this. Hey, hey there, awesome people. I am Brooke Summer, and you are listening to Business Straight Up, the podcast for creative entrepreneurs to learn, connect, grow, and build the business and life that they dream of. Welcome. Let's get going and dive right in. Welcome, welcome, awesome entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. I am excited because we are in a brand new year. I know that so many people have this negative view of previous years and and are excited for the new year. And then you get to these resolutions and you're like, I'm going to make all these changes. And then they don't actually happen. So today we are going to go through five actionable steps that you can take to crush your goals this year and to really make things happen. Before I do that, I do want to read a review of the week. This week's review is from the amazing Samantha Jessup. She said, Brooke is so knowledgeable about business and she makes learning about it more fun with her upbeat tone and sarcasm. I can't wait to see what advice she has and who else she brings to the show. Um, I never thought that my sarcasm would actually be an asset, but I have learned as my kids start to get older and they're sarcastic back to me, that it is such kind of a fun thing to like learn about them and see them implement in their own lives. And some people can't handle it and that's okay, but sometimes we make things so heavy that a little dose of sarcasm gives us a good laugh and then we can move forward. Am I right? So today's episode is all about moving forward in 2019, setting goals, making them happen so that you don't just set a New Year's resolution and you're like, oh, well, yeah, that's gone now. So March is here and yeah, I lasted two months. (laughs) I think that we've all done that. So I actually choose a word for the year, and I have shared this in the Facebook group. Instead of a New Year's resolution, I choose a word every year, and I started doing this. I can't believe it's been more than 10 years now that I've been doing this, and that word is my focus for the year. So 2019, I have chosen my word. I am going to share my word for 2018 because it was something that I was really struggling with, and I have this word glittered in front of my desk, so I would never forget it. And that word for 2018 was dauntless, meaning fearless, not willing to let fear stop you. And that word was so important to me for 2018. 
So with that in mind, I have my word for 2019 now, which I finalized a couple weeks ago, and that word is action. Um, So many times I have not taken action because I am a recovering perfectionist, and it is one of those things that I just want something to be perfect before I put it out there, but the reality is that that keeps me from doing a lot of things that I could be and should be doing in the world. And so action is my word for 2019 and we're going to rock it and we're going to see how I can implement that into my life and into my business. So just wanted to share a little bit uh, from me personally. And now let's look at 2019 and five steps that you can take, five things that you can do and implement today to kick ass in 2019 and crush your goals. Number one is something that I know that some people might disagree with, but I have found it very cathartic and very important in figuring out my goals for the new year. And number one is to actually look back on 2018. So first, give yourself a high five for entering 2019. There are so many possibilities, things to look forward to this year. And if you don't believe that, you might want to do a little bit of a mindset shift and look at the opportunities that you have available to you this year. Even if you're going through something that's really difficult right now, it can always get better. And I know that people don't want to hear that, and I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not trying to dash your dreams. But even if you're going through something that is challenging, it can definitely get better. So I want you to give yourself a high five. We're in a new year. And then I want you to look back on 2018 and grab a piece of paper, grab your favorite pretty pen. I have my pink pen right here. And I want you to write down five things that you accomplished or really, really just did a great job on. And this does not have to be business. I want you to think about maybe you bought a home. Maybe you had a baby. That's kind of a big accomplishment, right? (laughs) Look back at 2018 and write down five things that you accomplished or that you did a really great job of. Maybe you opened a new studio. Maybe you started a new product offering. Maybe you raised your prices and you didn't die because of it. Maybe you shared your photos on social media and that was really scary for you and you're proud of that. Write down five of those things. And then I want you to look at 2018 and write down only three things that you could have done better or that you wish you would have changed. And I am limiting limiting you to three because I don't want you to get in your head about this. I don't want you to feel shame. I don't want you to look at yourself and be upset with yourself and kind of dwell on this. It doesn't do anyone any good when you dwell on the negative. So I want you to look at 2018 and only choose three. And I know that's hard, but keep it to three. Do not elaborate. Do not go further because we want to look at those things and learn from them so that we can look at 2019 and look at what we can change. So do you have those written down? Take a moment, pause this if you need to. And I want you to write down the five awesome things from 2018 and the three things that you need to work on. And step number two, we're going to talk about achievement goals and habit goals. So there are two very different types of goals when you're entering the new year. The first is achievement goals. These goals are very specific. And for both achievement and habit, I want them to be very measurable. So for instance, achievement goal might be a certain revenue number that you want to hit for the year. Or maybe it's a specific number of sessions that you want or a specific number of weddings that you want. Maybe it's a specific number of clients that you want to work with. Or maybe I want to do so many style shoots this year. I want to be published in so many publications this year. It needs to be an end goal. So an achievement goal is not something you do every day. It's an end goal, kind of a a vision, the, the finish line, so to speak. Because I want you to look at those achievement goals, it will help you move into the next type of goal, which is habit goals. Habit goals are things that 
you want to continue doing daily, maybe weekly, maybe three times a week. And this is where a lot of us get stuck in the New Year's resolutions. We're like, I'm totally going to exercise more. And then we don't. And part of the problem with that is that this statement, I'm going to exercise more, isn't measurable. What are you going to do with that? Like, how do you know when it's more? Technically, if you're not exercising at all right now, and you walk to go get the mail, you're exercising more. Congratulations, you've done it. (laughs) So it needs to be very specific and measurable. If you want to exercise more, what does that look like? How will you know when you have achieved that habit goal? When you have crushed it, how will you know when you actually reached the goal that you set for yourself? Habit goals are things to look at that are maybe three times a week. So maybe instead of I'm going to exercise more, you say, I'm going to go for a walk 15 minutes, three times a week. That is extremely measurable. You can look at last week and say, I did it or I did not do it. Whereas the statement, I'm going to exercise more is really subjective. More than what? More than who? More than your past life? More than last week? What if you exercise a lot this week and then next week you don't do anything? Technically, you're not more. So I want you to be very specific when you're setting these goals, both for achievement goals and habit goals. And I want you to take your pretty piece of paper that you have 2018's information written down on. And I want you to write out three achievement goals. So remember, this is for the year. These are end goals finish line type goals, visions. And then I want you to write down three to five habit goals. And if I sound a little congested, I apologize. I have been dealing with a little bit of congestion, but hopefully it won't affect it too much. (laughs) So on your piece of paper, I want you to write down three achievement goals for the year. And if you want to write down more, please do. And then three to five habit goals, and they need to be measurable. Do not write down, I want to raise my prices. No. (laughs) You want to raise your prices to what? Do you want to have an average client investment of a certain number? You need to make sure that they are 100% measurable so that you can say, I have reached this goal. You cannot say that when you leave it very open and subjective. All right. So if you need to take a second, pause the audio and write those down. I'll be right here. All right. So we have number one to look back on 2018. Number two to start setting some achievement goals and habit goals that are very measurable and specific. And now we're going to go into number three. Now, number three is specifically for those achievement goals, because when it comes to habit goals, you're looking at creating an actual habit instead of a finish line. So I'm going to exercise three times a week is very specific and weekly. It's not maybe the end year of I'm going to exercise 150 times this year. And you can switch that up if that's what you want to do. That's cool. But we're going to work backwards for those achievement goals. So I want you to take one of your achievement goals and we're going to break it down and work backwards. So for example, if we have an achievement goal of 100000 in revenue for the year, and that is your goal, and you know it's kind of a stretch, you're kind of scared, but if your goals aren't big enough, that they scare you, they're not big enough. <laughs> so let's say 100000 in revenue, and logically with four quarters in the year, that means that we are going to be looking at about 25000 per quarter in revenue which breaks down to about $8,000 a month, give or take, let's say $8,400 a month to reach your revenue goal. When you're working backwards, you can look at those goals and decide what you need to do to get there. And those will give you the steps that you need to be taking every single day. So if we have $25,000 for a quarter, And let's say typically a quarter at three months, four weeks a month is about 12 weeks-ish. So if you need to make $25,000 in 12 weeks, that means you're going to be at about $2,000, a little more than $2,000 every single week. What are you going to do to be making $2,000 every single week? 
And, you know, this works the other way too, because if you're looking at $2,000 a week, there's 52 weeks in a year. Then if you take a couple weeks off, you're still at $100,000. So the math will always work itself out. But when you know that you need to make $2,000 in a week, what does that look like for you? If you have a session that is $100 and it includes everything, then you're going to have to be doing 20 sessions a week. I think if my math is correct. You're going to have to be doing 20 sessions a week. Now that is a lot of sessions in a week. There is no way I would do 20 sessions in a week. I have done 30 in a month and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> so look at your pricing because this will help you determine, are my prices set based on what I want to make, based on my overall cost, based on my cost of goods, my overhead and everything that goes into running a business. If you need to make $2,000 a week, what does that look like for you based on your current pricing? Do you need to make changes in order to meet that goal? And some weeks may be a stretch, but it shouldn't be fighting every single week to make $2,000 a week. If your pricing does not match that, then you might need to revisit your pricing or revisit your goal. Maybe you have a side hustle. Maybe you have a full-time job and you just don't have the time to do that right now. And that is completely okay. But we want to make sure that those goals are measurable and realistic so that they stretch you, but they're not going to break you. So number three is to work backwards. Look at that achievement goal. Maybe you have an achievement goal of six styled shoots this year. And that means three in the first half of the year and three in the second half of the year. Schedule those now. (laughs) That means one every two months. And I know that sounds scary to get those on the calendar now, but that is how you're truly going to reach and crush those goals in 2019 is by knowing what you need to do ahead of time to meet that goal so that you're not left in December going, I need to schedule six style shoots in the next two weeks because we all know that that is a nightmare. So don't set yourself up for that. All right, let's talk about number four. So we have number one, look back on 2018. Number two, set achievement goals and habit goals that are measurable. Number three, work backwards with the end in mind. And number four, split your year into quarters. This has been absolutely life-changing for me. I highly recommend it. I actually took a course to learn this called the 90-Day Year, but if you don't want to do the course, um, that one is by Todd Herman, by the way, just in case you're wondering. If you don't want to do the full course, just split your goals into 90 days. Now, of course, there is more in that course on how to break it up and focus and stuff like that, but Right now, if you just want to move forward and you don't want to take in more courses, you want to create and produce, then split your year into quarters. This is so, so crazy life-changing because what happens is a lot of times we'll set a goal and look at the end of the year and then something happens in, let's say, May or August, and it completely changes our focus for the year. Maybe it's a personal thing. Maybe you have something crazy going on in your life and you have to completely change your priorities because life happens when you split your year into quarters and start looking at quarterly goals that meet your annual goals. So you're, you're really splitting it up and chunking it up. Then that means that you can pivot easily. And even more importantly, you can give yourself a break when things don't work out the way that you wanted them to. What if someone you love is in a car accident and you need to be at the hospital with them? And so maybe you can't do as many sessions as you wanted to. Or what if um, you have a family emergency and you have to work from New York for a while? There are so many things that can happen in your life and breaking your year up into 90-day increments can be completely life-changing. I cannot recommend this more Like if you take nothing away from this episode, break your year up into quarters. It will allow you to pivot easily. It will mean that you can change things up in the year if things um, affect you in a different way, or maybe 
you meet your goals super early and you decide that you want to set a new goal. That's an amazing thing. And if you are waiting until the end of the year, you are wasting time that could be spent setting a new goal, a new standard of success for yourself, time with your family, time supporting yourself, paying off debt, whatever it is that you want to do with your life, set it into quarters. And I promise you, it will make such a big difference. So we have number one, look back. Number two, set those achievement goals and habit goals. Number three, work backwards with the end in mind. Number four, split your year into quarters. And number five is to track your goals. This is not as easy as it sounds. Am I right? (laughs) I want you to consider how you're going to track all of these goals, both achievement and habit goals. And I have set up a goal sheet for you that you can download for free at businessstraightup.com slash monthly goals, all one word. And what this will do is give you an opportunity to look at your goals every single month, break them down into steps so that you can track what you're actually doing. I actually just recorded another episode this morning with Lauren Armstrong, who's a productivity specialist. And I cannot even tell you how much we talked about being busy does not mean being productive. Now it can, but how many times do you get lost in your day-to-day crap that you have to do? And we all have to do it. I do too. Things like email or posting to social media or following up with clients. But these things are not moving your business forward. The activities that you need to do to move your business forward are often not the things that take up the most time in your day-to-day business. Tracking your goals and tracking those habits and the steps that you need to take to ultimately reach those end goals will be a complete game changer for you. I promise. So go to businessstraightup.com slash monthly goals. I am working on a video to kind of walk you through how to use that. I don't have it ready yet, but I promise there will be a video there soon. And I want you to start using this sheet. And if you want to change it, please do. If you want to create your own, please do. If you have a planner that walks you through this, the 90X planner is a really good one for that. And again, it's those 90 day years, the 90 days for the 90X that can be so beneficial in your business. Use whatever resource works for you. Everyone is different. Everyone prefers a different thing. For me personally, I cannot put my calendar in a planner. It doesn't make sense for me. I have a team that needs to see that. And if I have it sitting on my desk, they can access that and help me where I have asked them to help me. So my calendar is in Google Calendar, but when it comes to planning and dreaming and goals, I do have a planner. I love the Daniel Laporte Desire Map Planner. I will put a link to that in the show notes at businessstraightup.com slash podcast. But use something to track your goals, even if it's just a blank sheet of paper with a black pen and there's no colors on it or no glitter, whatever. Use something to track your goals. You need to be able to look at every month, what are you doing to reach those end goals? What are you doing to move your business forward? Because if you're not tracking it, chances are you're not managing it. I I think the goal is what gets measured gets managed. And I'm so sorry that I don't remember who said that, but it's so true. If you're not looking at something and actively measuring it, chances are you're probably kind of skimming that in your business and ignoring it. So I cannot stress this enough. Track your goals. I work with so many of my students on goal setting, and I know that everyone has different ideas when it comes to goals. Some people like vision boards, and I actually have one that I'm literally staring at right now. It is on the wall in my office in front of my desk so I can see it all the time. And I haven't touched it in a while. I haven't um, revisited that since about March last year, we got together with friends and we cut things out of magazines. And I can honestly say that about half the things on my vision board are real. Now they are true today. And I have worked on them and looked at them for months now. And they are things that I wanted to accomplish. And some of them are overall, like one of them says wellness. 
So as you may or may not know, I deal with an autoimmune disease. I have psoriatic arthritis. And so wellness means something very different for me than it does for someone else. It's not necessarily about losing weight. It's about feeling good. And so that was something that I wanted to focus on. And that's why I have that word on my vision board. I wanted it to be in the forefront of my mind. Some people like vision boards. Some people like goals. Some people like sheets. Some people like numbers. Whatever you feel works for you, I want to encourage you to use that because everyone is different. But I also want to encourage you that even if it's the weirdest thing ever, track your goals and measure them. Split that year into quarters so that you can accurately look at what you need to do every single day to move your business forward so that you're not just busy, but you're actually productive and you're creating things instead of just consuming everyone else's content. Decide what you want in your life and in your business and track it to make sure it happens. I am so excited for 2019 and what this year will bring. I'm going to put this all out there for you um, so you guys can hold me accountable too. I have pretty lofty quarter one and quarter two goals. And if I reach both quarters, I am going swimming with the whale sharks in September. So if anyone uh, wants to set that, like maybe set some goals, quarter one, quarter two, and you want to go swimming with the whale sharks with me, Uh, let's do it because seriously, that is my, I I know what motivates me and it's travel and it's marine life. And so I am using that to motivate me for quarter one and quarter two. Know yourself, know what motivates you. And if you want to go swimming with the whale sharks with me, let me know because uh, I don't think my husband will do it. So (laughs) As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I hope that this has been helpful for you. I wanted it to be somewhat short so that I could walk you through it. That's why I didn't go through the goal sheet in the episode, but I will do a video and put it with the goal sheet. It is a free download. It does not cost you anything at businessstraightup.com slash monthly goals. If you have enjoyed this episode, can you hit pause like right now and go to iTunes and leave a review? Your reviews mean so much to me. I love to read them. My team loves to read them. And it's what helps us bring you amazing content. I want to know what you want to learn about. I want to know who you want to see on the show. Is there a specific guest that you're like, Brooke should totally bring this person on? Tell me. Leave a review on iTunes because I want to make sure that I'm impacting your life in a positive way and serving you and giving you things that will help you. So as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. You can reach out in the Business Straight Up community, which is at businessstraightup.com slash community. All of the show notes with links and information will be at businessstraightup.com slash podcast. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do this year. Can you do me a favor and just head over to that Facebook group, the communities, and tell me, like, what are your big goals for this year? If you don't want to name numbers and go through that, that's fine. But personally, I don't see anything wrong with that. And I feel like we don't talk about those numbers enough in our industry. So come on over to the community. Tell me what you're going to do. I want to know exactly what you're shooting for this year, because this year is full of possibility an opportunity, and I want to see you crush it. So head on over to the community, go to the show notes, go to iTunes, and I am so excited for you this year. Please leave me a message. Let me know if you have any questions, and we will talk soon. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for listening to Business Straight Up. I'm so glad that you could join us today. Check out the show notes for this and all of the episodes at businessstraightuppodcast.com. And I can't wait to talk with you again. Have a great day.